Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Allure of the Poor, sponsored by Dracina Wines. Today, I swear I am sitting here in California, but I really wish I was face to face here because today I have Christian Vallejo of Vic uh, Winery in Chile. And I would love to be in Chile. I have never had the opportunity to be there and it's on my bucket list. My bucket list is rather large, but I want to go, I want to go. So, but at least I can meet you virtually. So welcome, Christian. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, very happy to be here with you. And also uh, said that you are more than invited here. We have a beautiful hotel in the property. So once you want to go to Chile, you know where you have to go. All right. Okay. Uh, as soon as I, as soon as I can, man, I'm bolted in. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so we actually met on Instagram. Um, and I was out looking for Cab Franc producers to help support Cab Franc Day. And you replied. And then we just started talking in, in those DMs yes. in Instagram. So you have to love social media because it definitely makes the world a much smaller place. And uh, so first of all, tell me where you're, tell me a little bit about yourself first, and then we'll get into Chile and all of that stuff. So give me your background, your origin story. Well, um, uh, you know, with my family, we are growers. Uh, we produce grapes for, you know, to make wine, but we are not producing wine already, uh, at this time. Uh, so wine has been in, in, on the table always. Uh, since I'm a child, uh, I, I saw the wine on the table and wine was something that created that atmosphere where everybody, uh, you know, share thoughts, um, everything, you know, wine is something that it's part of the culture in, in, in my family. And uh, well, when I was in the university and I had to choose my speciality in terms of agriculture, I choose winemaking. And the first day that I was there in the winemaking, you know, class, I knew that this is for me because it's <laughs> the only natural product that put together nature and man as a you know, human being. Uh, was, that's what I want to say. Um, and it's something that you create from the nature. It's something that you really have to understand the nature, read the nature, and come up with something that everybody will love or don't. <laughs> so it's like a pain. It's like a pain. Somebody loves, uh, for example, for me, uh, it's really... Uh, you know, uh, in Spain, when I was working there uh, and you go to, to, to Barcelona, you have a lot of there of Gaudí, um, uh, Mido, Mido for me is something spectacular, but there's some people that they don't like it. They don't like him, you know? Uh, well, wine is like that. Some people love your wine, some people don't. I used to learn a lot from the people that they don't like it or they have something objective to say. And that's what I like because wine finally put everybody together um, you know, in the good moments or don't, but it's always wine shares those moments that you keep in mind forever or in your heart, right? you know. And since then, I've been working in Chile for already, I have to say that, <laughs> 20, 25 years. And, uh, and, uh, but I have, I have been very lucky to, to travel all around the world making wine. I've been in Napa in 1999. I've been in Spain in La Conca de Barbera um, in, in, two, in 2001. In 2003, I worked in Chateau Margaux. In 2004, I worked in Chateau Le Ville Poiferre. 2005, um, I worked in Italy and also in France in the Chateau Berliquet, San Emilio, and in Italy in Cantina Toblino in the north of, uh, of Italy. Uh, and then I, I came again to Italy and, uh, and uh, I repeat uh, Bordeaux in the Chateau Le Croc, which is uh, Bordeaux Classé. So I did Per Cru Classé, Lucien Grand Cru, uh, Berliquet, which is uh, Acote, that's French, um, which is the neighbor of. Um, of uh, Chateau Pavi. So I've been, I've been lucky to learn from different cultures what wines means for them. And uh, so I, I, what I learned, I bring it here. And, and now I'm, I'm, I'm since 2007 working with uh, the big family. And I've been producing wine with them in a different way that you can uh, find in Chile. 
and um, and I've been using all those uh, things that I learned in the different countries and the different cultures and in our terroir. And we're producing an, a, now a, a wine that is considered uh, one of the, I don't know, uh, sometimes oh, when you say that. From you, what I've like read, something. it's one of the top wines in Chile. So <laughs> yeah. you, you might not want to say that, but I've read quite a bit and it, that's what it says. Yes. It's, uh, it's being uh, one of the most well-respected wines coming out of Chile. So kudos to you. I guess taking all those yeah. trips around has, has paid yes. off. Um, yes. You, you were in Saint Damien. That's one of my favorite places on earth. I absolutely, I absolutely love it there. Um, so, being in all of those places and yes, taking in all of that knowledge and all of that, though, like there's got to be similarities between that. You know, I mean, making wine is basically making wine. But each yes. area has their own little tweaks and things like that. What would you say is like one of the, you know, when you when you saw it, you're like, oh. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, uh, that's a very good question. And um, and uh, yes, I, I learned some things from each culture. Uh, for example, France, um, it was about viticultural aspect and tannins. So they work the, the, the vines till the harvest. And that's, it, and that's where you make wine in, in the vineyard. And that's my philosophy too now. I learned it from them. And then tannins in the winery. Napa, it's it's more about um, the technology that you use. at that time. I'm talking about 1999, so everything changed, right? But <laughs> at that time, it was to use the technology to help you to make better wine. So I learned a, a lot of different techniques there. Uh, I bring a lot of uh, different machines to help you know uh, how to make wine, like for the pump overs or things like that. Italy was about the perfume of the wine, so I went there to learn how to get that beautiful perfume because Italy, you know. Uh, except for some Chianti or some Toscanos, uh, they are not big wines. They're more about a beautiful aroma and perfume, right? So I went there to learn how to get that beautiful perfume. And from Spain, I learned that traditional aspect to produce wine in a very, like in the old days. Nice. Um, uh, and uh, well, I learned a lot from the different cultures. I make beautiful friends, those friends that you never forget, even that maybe you don't talk with them in, in one year. But when you saw them, it's like a big hug, you know, like you have it really in your, in your heart. Oh, that is amazing. You know, and I think that's something that's very different. Like, I, I mean, I would love to work a harvest someplace other than here, you know. Um, it, I think that it's so exciting and so uh, such an educational experience just to see how things are done similarly and, you know, differently, and you're still making wine. So it's pretty cool in my, you know, to see how other regions treat their vines. Yes, yes, it's, it's amazing, but there's something in common that wine is something that makes everybody to get together. You know, it's, it's part in every culture, wine it's present in the best moments and, and, and those moments get in your heart and in your mind forever. That's Absolutely. something that in every culture you get, you can get that. I love that. That's beautiful. Uh, so in the, I, you know, I have to do a little stalking in Forbes magazine, the article states a newcomer to the super Chilean designation is Vic founded by Norwegian uh, Uruguayan billionaire, Alex Vic. So tell us about, tell us about Alex Vic. First of all, I've never known a billionaire. So that's kind of cool, um, but tell us about him and you know how did you guys come together uh, for you to start making wine for him? Well, um, I, I will tell a little bit this our story and how we get together, and that's that that uh, shows the personality of the family of Alex and Kerivik. She's very important also in, in 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 the family and and in our winemaking too. She's always present. Both are beautiful, beautiful person. Um, you know that very close to us. They are very involved. They love wine. They love art, uh, and they love hospitality. Um, when I met the family in 2006, they were looking for 2005. They were looking for a property to make wine and to be part of the pantheon of the best wine of the world. That's the the goal. Um, and they were looking uh, a place or a terroir in France. Argentina, Chile, and different places. But finally, they decide to come to Chile. They found our property, um, which is 4,300 hectares, but 
300 hectares planted. And we have six different valleys in the property, a beautiful influence of the ocean coming in. And the first thing that I love from them, from Alex and Kerry, is that they were very clear about what they want. Um, they want to start from the beginning. Maybe it was easy to buy something, you know, but no, they want to create something, something from inside with a different philosophy, very focused on quality. So they are uh, very involved. They, they, they were wine lovers with a lot of information, but it's different when you're a grower. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you are a grower, you have to understand the wine in, 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 in another way because, yes, he's a billionaire. Um, he works, uh, he makes his money in Wall Street, but Wall Street is like second by second, you have opportunities. In wine, is one per year. Same for the winemakers, right? Uh, we have one opportunity per year so right. since you are working when you have 25 years old till, let's say, 65. So you have 40 opportunities in your life. <laughs> You can have 40 in Wall Street in one second, right? Mm -hmm. So it's this is totally a different business. And for them, it's more a family thing than a business. They know this is a very long term. And they, they know that here, they, the business or this is more about passion. It's more about the family uh, issue. It's more about their name. That's why they call it Vic. Vic is the last name of the family. So they are very involved. They're people that they love uh, to be very deep, go very deep in everything with information, but also with passion. That's why they love um, art. Uh, and when they decide to go into this adventure at that time uh, or this dream, um, they were already uh, they have a big collection of art, and they were very involved about art and hospitality. And they they feel that they need wine to make the, the whole connection. So when you come here to our hotels, you, you will see art everywhere. And that connection, the connection about wine and art, and you know, I was saying that wine is the only thing that make that connection between man and, and nature. And you have two authors, the winemaker, could be he or, or she, and the nature. And this is what they, they also see, it's this, this, this connection with nature, this, ability to make something different from a different terroir. They connected, connected this all to, to art. That's why we have two bottles with a piece of, uh, the, the label is a piece of art originally. And they're really, really passionate about what they do, what they love and very involved. That's what I, that's what I like. They are always present and very, very, very close to us. You know, they, they are just, they live in States, but yeah. it's like you have it here, you know. Uh, they, they live in, in Connecticut, in fact. Okay. But it's like you have it here because they're really connected to us. They love this. That's beautiful. And I saw pictures of the winery. First of all, it's underground. There's a yes. reflecting pool that is just brilliant because it functions to cool the barrels. I mean, it's it's well, well thought out, well, um, you know, well conceived and thought to be sustainable, you know, and, you know, very nice to mother nature but wonderful to make the wines in so can you talk about the the winery a bit like who, the, the design of it and all of the features that make it like incredible well uh thank you for that uh yes you know that since the beginning when i met them um you know i was working in a winery in chile for for 10 years i've been in two wineries in, in chile and um and uh and that family was involved in, in wine for a long time, but I met them. I, I, I just stopped in the, in the property. There was nothing. I feel that their, you know, the passion about wine, what they want. The, the, the terroir was amazing for wine, but at that time there was nothing, but you see the conditions and everything, but what getting together there. And, but one thing, this is what I'm, I'm talking about this. One thing was really important that they want uh, to be very aware about every detail. So when we start to work doing different things, high density in the vineyards, 5,500 plants per hectare to 10,000 like in Bordeaux, nobody in Chile has 100%, 10,000 plants per hectare. Everything grafted, you don't need, gra uh, you don't need fruit stock in Chile because we don't have phylloxera, but yeah. anyway, we have it because it's more precise for the moment of the harvest in terms of the tannins. Um, we, have, we have been doing different things, but something really important was that in, in one moment we realized that our way to work was holism. 
you know, that come from Aristoteles and, and says that the whole is more than the sum of each part. And uh, in this whole, something very important for them was to be very, very respectful with the nature. Our property is like something that we have to take care about it. We have to really, really have to be and have to think uh, very uh, green. And uh, so when we built the winery, the hotel, every building that we, we built uh, was thinking about sustainability. So for example, you were saying that our warehouse is underneath a, a water mirror. It's under the ground. So in that way, we have the temperature and the humidity without using that much energy. The, the energy that we spend in recycling that water to, to, to cool down the, the warehouse is like 10 times less than the one that you need to keep the temperature in a warehouse that is outside. Uh, so uh, the roof, uh, we can work all the, during the whole day without turning any lights on. But the most important thing is that it isolates from outside. So during the winter, it's not that cold. During the, the summer, it's not that hot. So if I have to cool down a tank during the summer, I have to fight with the temperature in the tank, not with the outside too, you know? So I spend a lot less energy. Uh, we harvest during the night. You know that in Chile, we have 10 degrees, 12 degrees during the night. So the grapes arrive naturally at 10 degrees and I can have five days of cool maceration without using energy because all the grapes comes into the tank at 10 degrees and I just to keep them at 10 degrees. I don't have to cool them down, which is a lot of energy. Imagine energy. that they, 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 they arrive at, I don't know, 25 uh, degrees Celsius. And I have to, to go make them, make them go down to 10. It's a lot of energy. But when you harvest during the night, the nature is doing the job. And, and they naturally come here to the winery at 10 degrees Celsius and you don't have to spend energy. So everything was about to be very sustainable. Uh, in our winemaking, uh, our wine is, let's say, um, no intervention, uh, wild yeast. There are no addings, no filtration, no uh, finings. Uh, the flavor that you feel is just uh, the terroir and barrels. Um, well, barrels, they come from France, but now we're working and have a new project, which I call the barroir. It's about, to make the barrels from us. Uh, and there's something of sustainability there and something that make that only thing that is not from us, which is the barrels, make it from us. So we are toasting the barrel with our own oak that we have in the property. So in that way, wow. in, some, in some way, the barrels now became from big. You know, I bring the, the oak from France, we make the barrels and we toast the barrels in the winery with our, our own oak, which has around 120, 120 years old. And we're using the one that they're already on the floor. We are not cutting trees. We are those ones that the nature says, uh, your, your cycle is done. We said, no, it's not done. He, that tree has something else to say and we're using to toast the barrels. So now that tree will have, I don't know, 25 more years in a bottle. Wow. So it's something a little bit romantic, but it's the only way to make the, the wine 100% from us. That's it. That's incredible. And you are the first per, first winery I've ever heard that is doing that. So that is so that is so cool. And so, I mean, so you basically ha have your own cooperage. And yes, I, yes. Did, do, is that you also or is that somebody else who is actually who is putting the barrels together and and toasting them? Well, well, you know that something very important that it's that uh, I'm very involved. Uh, I, I've been, well, uh, not this last year, but during 2018, 19, I went to France. I visit my friends again, all, all the ones that I, uh, that I met in 2003, four, five, uh, but to learn how to make barrels, how to choose the oak, how to choose the trees. And then, then I realized that, and I'm working with, to Cooperage that I have to, to choose the, 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 you know, the, I don't know how to say anything in English, in, in Spanish, the estates, the estates. So now what I will do, I go there, I choose my estates, they bring it in a pallet square, they, they send it to me, I receive that, and I worked the estates to make the barrels. So I turn it, I put the both faces okay. and we toast wow. them. Wow, that's and, awesome. And, and the, the machines, they arrived um, this last year in, in October. And um, 
there, there are a lot of things very particular in this that, for example, those trees that they have been lying on the floor for I don't know how many years, they have a natural, the, the rain has been, you know, you, you know, oak has, has to be 24 or 36 months under the, the rain in France, right? But this oak has been, I don't know how long under the rain in our country, naturally. So everything is about to make everything uh, from nature. nature. That that is incredible. I that that is I, I'm blown away by that. I'm just, I I it's like I'm stumbling over words, but that that's blown away for. And it's got to be so much easier to to ship the staves yes. not as a barrel <laughs> because we yes, all yes, we yes. all know how much a barrel costs and how difficult it is to physically ship a barrel. So wow, yes. that that yes. is truly innovative thinking. Truly innovative thinking. Uh, so you're you're actually located, and I don't know if I'm going to say it correctly, but the Milehu Valley. Mi Miyawe, yes, Miyawe Valley in Miyawe. the Kachapoale Valley. Um, it's a, a little bit in the central area, but very close to the coast, in the Kachapoale Valley. Yeah. And then how how does that? So let's bring this to to my beloved Cap Franc. All right. So you've got vineyards of Cap Franc. How does the how does your valley? uh affect the you know the climate affect what's going on in the vineyard well um if we in, in the case of uh, of uh, governor frank uh well I, I learned about it in france i love it uh, normally all the great wines they have governor frank in the blend it gives that mineral aspect the tension in the tannins that beautiful acidity makes the wine elegant and, but it's a variety or a sepatch that you have to be very aware about how to manage the grapes during the year, since the prune. Uh, so it, you have to take a lot of uh, effort during the year to keep that balance in the grapes. I always say that a balanced wine, it's, it's come from a balanced vine that makes a balanced bunch. And then that balanced bunch, balanced grapes, and, balance, and that balance grapes, balance wine. Exactly. So you have to spend a lot of time in the fields um, taking care about how to manage the green area, how to make the green harvest. And for example, we do special things like we cut the shoulders and the tail of each bunch. So you imagine the quantity of work that is, is that? Wow. Um, yeah, so, so we really take care about Cabernet Franc because it's a, it's a variety that if, if you have sun, water, and a good soil, it's able to grow a lot. So it's, it's vigorous. So you have to, to work in order to keep the balance uh, and don't let them grow. You have to make them focus on the ripeness of the, ta the tannins and the seeds. So you have to be aware all the year in the, in the, in the, in the vineyard uh, in terms to manage the, 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 the vines to get the quality. So it's, it's really a variety that it's, it's all with, with you since, since, the, since the prune till the last bottle that you have to be taking care about. And for me, it gives, gives that special aspect to the wine that any effort for me, I don't care. It's, it, I have to do it for that quality, for that beautiful tannin I have to spend I don't know how many hours with the sun here you know right. in the vineyards I love it because the final result it's about the effort it's about love it's about passion it's about Cabernet Frank need that you know they, they, they need he needs attention yes yes he, he's he's very spoiled and needy <laughs> needy uh, variety mm -hmm. um, so but I'm gonna go back to this because now we drop we drop um, bunches so that you know and we can we trim back leaves and we do that so that we are you know focusing in on the amount of sunlight that's coming on you know because of the pyrazines and and that stuff but i i have never heard of cutting the shoulders and the and the bottom of it so can you just go through that for me because i'm completely intrigued by this what, what is the the thought process of shortening a bunch versus just dropping the bunch that's next to it? Well, that, uh, we do in the, in the Cabernet Franc, we do, uh, let's say, uh, four green harvests. Uh, the first one is when you choose the shoots. 
the cans that you will have during the year. Right. Once you take one shoot out, you will you are taking some grit out too. To. Um, then the next one it's about to let one bunch per can. Right. The Cabernet Franc is vigorous. You can have two bunches per can. So see, before the horizon, we let just one bunch per can. Okay. And before the horizon, we cut the shoulders on the tail. Then we let them uh, get the color, you know, when the horizon starts. And when you have like 70%, 75% of the horizon, there are some bunches that some they are still green. So those ones, they will be green all the time. I mean, gr green not in color, but will be late Correct. till the end. Once they get the color, you will never know which one was the one that it was late. So we, we, we take it out again, so four times. Um, but the tail and the shoulders, I have, I have a picture there because it's, it's very, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. I, I learned this from the guys that they produce grape for the table grapes, you know, uh, right. for, to eat. Right. And they do that because they know that the quantity of sugar at the moment of the harvest is less in the shoulders and the tail. So that's why they cut it. In that way, they have a very homogeneous bunch. So I thought about that. I read about that. I read about the information, uh, and it's true. Uh, well, I have a picture there if I, I if I can share. But um, uh, when you go in the middle of the horizon, a big bunch like Cabernet Franc or Syrah or Merlot also happens in Cabernet Sauvignon. But the Cabernet Sauvignon is more cylinder. Right. So it's here is more. You can see it better uh, you will see that the shoulders are green the middle of the bunch is already red and the tail is green so it's easy to cut the the three points you know because right. there in some moment you have the shoulders green and the tail green right. well but and by the way for, the, for those who are who are listening when he's saying easy um, he's talking you can see it easily but that is yes. Changed, yes. I, I mean we, we've never done that we drop bunches and that's it but uh, that is painstaking. To, I can I can't imagine uh, mm. the the tediousness, the the time that it must take to go to each bunch and then drop the the drop the yeah. shoulders and then and and so now you're it's, doing it's that a, to average out to to keep the most of the sugar where in reality, so you're getting a better realization of what the sugar level is when you're harvesting than an average than an overall average. Well, yes, the sugar is the easier uh, measure that we can have. Um, and that's what the, the table grape producer, uh, producers uh, used to, to, you know, to check. Right. For us as winemakers, also sugar is easy to check. The, the tannins is something that it's, there are no machines for that. Uh, it's right. The only one is the mouth. Walking, so, walking um, through the when, Yeah, so when, the, when you have to do this when the, the, the bunches are green, no sugar. So in that in that way, you don't have risk about to have fungus. So it's just the shoulders and the tail. But if you if you go to any uh, vineyard for wine, uh, a red one, could be big bunches like Syrah or Franc or Merlot, and you have a look during the horizon, at the beginning of the horizon, you will see that the bunch start to have color in the middle, and the last part that they are red is shoulders and tail. So it's uh, that's why it's just cut the shoulders and the tail. You, you will be sure that those grapes, those berries will be late. I love it. I just learned something new and, and we, you know, we, we harvest calf rock. We don't do that. So I'm going to have to start doing a little more research and figuring that out because <laughs> that, that, and that's honestly the first time I've ever heard anybody talk about cutting shoulders and, and the tail. And it, is that, I mean, that's you coming up with that concept yes. to do that. And are you doing that with the other varieties or is that specifically for Kefranc because of its, its. Well, in, in the property we have, we have five. Um, well, in fact, we are the only ones, I think in Chile doing this also, but um, it's a lot of work and it's expensive, but, but if you are commitment with quality and that's what you want, and that's the philosophy of the family. If we need that to get that, beautiful quality aspect, but well, let's do it. Um, Alex is also a financial guy, so it's not just about spend money. It's, he knows that that will make the wine better, so we'll sell more or we'll have better ratings. Yes. 
in some way that will come back, right? Okay. Um, so we are the only ones, I think, in Chile too. We do that with Merlot and Syrah because they are also big bunches. Okay. So we cut the shoulders and the tail. Okay. That, oh, I'm so intrigued. I am so intrigued. Um, all right. So as you've been traveling, we go back to, to Cap Franc. As you've been going traveling, how can, can you give some similarities and differences between like Cab Franc in Italy versus Cab Franc in Chile versus, you know, our California Cab Franc? What do you, what well, have you seen? Um, yeah, wh wh where I worked, um, I found Covered in Franc in Bordeaux and Napa and um, in Italy, I was very in the north, so there was another kind of red varieties like Perol de Go, La Grain, more kind of a, a, a blend between Italian and German varieties. Uh, also big bunches, but nothing to do with, not from the, not from the family Cabernet, right? Okay. You know, Frank, Cabernet, Carboner and Merlot, they, are, they have gen right. some, some genetic uh, that go through, right? Yes. Um, and um, here, because California and here, because of, you know that some people said that California and Chile, if you can do this with the map, they, they fit. We have the Pacific Ocean. So we have very sim a lot of similarities. Um, I will tell you uh, uh, after I finish uh, a story when I arrived the first time to San Francisco, but and I drive and I drove to to Napa. But um, the thing is that here and California bunches are bigger than in France, and um, in France uh, it's for, it's difficult it's more difficult for them to get the ripeness of the tannins. So so in fact that's why that's that's why they they have high density 10,000 plants per hectare and a few quantity per vine to, to let the, the, the bunches get right. That's why we're using that philosophy in order to produce also a few quantity per vine, get the balance and get the good quality. So uh, uh, the tannins in California and, and here, they, it's, easily, you, it's easy to get, the, to get it more right because of the, the, the the time or the hours that we have with sun. Hmm? Right. Uh, Bordeaux is different. You know that they don't. Sometimes they, they don't. They don't harvest when they want. They harvest when they can because of the rains that they have during the, the harvest. Yes. Every year is less because the, the global you know warming and all that. But um, uh, so the moment is different when they harvest the Cabernet Franc. The tannins are a little bit more angular, and when we harvest the Cabernet Franc, it's a bit more more round. Mm -hmm. Um, then when you do all this that we were talking about, you know, working the green area, one part from cane, cut the shoulders, you, all, you also have more round tannins. And the thing is that what you have similar is that, that mineral aspect and that beautiful acidity that makes the wine very vibrant. Um, and that is something that it's really particular for the Frank. And um, that is really helpful in the blends too. In my case, and our wines, Vic and Mia Cala, where we use Cabernet Franc, what I I, I expect and what, what gives the Franc to the to the blend is that tension in the tannins, that beautiful acidity uh, that makes the tannins like moving round, but they're like moving. So when I say tension, it's like they're using the whole space, but not with weight. It's just, uh, you know, it's like uh, the space, you have the stars you all over and they use all over. There's mm -hmm. small things that they're using the whole room, right. but there are no weight. And that has that, that beautiful, uh, le give that sensation of layers that helps the Cabernet Sauvignon to show better the tannins. And that a beautiful acidity makes the wine really uh, dynamic. And it's very helpful for to keep the wine for a long time. We're talking about wines that you can keep it in your in your cellar okay. and um, an acidity is very important in that case and frank is really really helpful I love it. and what about what about the soils the comparison of soils what what are your soils um by you and uh you know how how are they how does cabernet franc enjoy those soils like are you you well, you don't you not need to yes well here i have Cala. it's about 13% uh, Cabernet Franc, 
Vicky said a bit more than that. And um, you know, Cabernet Franc just 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 to show what I'm what I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're gonna and, get to that. We're gonna get to that. <laughs> uh, everybody knows like, oh, he's he's drinking. What is he drinking? I've been drinking the whole glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, you know, Cabernet Franc, uh, uh, it's a vigorous variety even in France or in California. So mm -hmm. when you have more, you know, uh, tweet, let's say more clay, uh, water, it tends to grow. So that's why when you want some a very balanced vine, you need to, to be very aware where you're planting your current friend. If there are too much clay, then you, have, you will have a very vigorous vine. So you need a combination of, uh, let's say lime, uh, uh, sand, some clay, because clay makes the wine uh, more complex and very helpful with the water. In our case in Chile, we are allowed by law to irrigate. Okay. We have, we have since the horizon till the, till the end of the harvest, uh, 120 days. So we need to irrigate and we are allowed to do it. We're not allowed, it, for example, to add sugar. In France, they can add sugar, but they cannot uh, irrigate. So every country has his, their own rules and right. uh, we can irrigate, but you have to be very careful with the irrigation in this case because of the same, it's vigorous. So if you give some, this is like you're in vacation, you have, you know, something to eat, sun, you forget about your work. You just, if you want to eat something, you have it. If you want to go to the pool, you have it. So you forget about the work. If the vines they, they have, water, sun, uh, a good soil, they don't need to ripe the vines, the, the grapes, because they yeah. have all they have everything, everything they that want. they need. Right. So you, you need to have a little stress. This, this is like where you're very focused on your work. Not too much work, because if you have too much work, you're overstressed, and then you start to forget everything because <laughs> where you start, right? But when you have everything in control and, and you have a little stress, but you are very focused, you make everything quick and very like, bah, here it is, you know, focus on that. For the vines, same thing. So if you have water, sun, uh, you have to be very careful to how many waters you will add. Uh, let's say for balance, you need to irrigate once, then you have to wait, and you have to play with the vines in terms to give them and take, the, and take it out, you know? And you need balance. You need them to work till the end. I don't, I'm not talking about to stress the vines. They have to feel that they need to ripe the tannins. Right. You know, and it's an, it, uh, that comes from a natural rule. Uh, you know, every 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 in the in the nature, the rule is survive for everyone. Right. How the vines or the the, the trees survive with the seeds. That seeds will touch the ground and will start a new plants, right? Right. So when they feel some. Oh, and I just lost you. We're going to hold on and see if you can come back. Okay, so hopefully he can come back in.
Hi, Laurie. Hi, okay. Yay, you're back. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry about that. We are very in the countryside and uh, we have a, a, you know, an energy problem in the area, uh, but everything is solved again. So I'm sorry about that. No problem. No problem. It's okay. I was like, all right, I'm just going to hang out here to see if he comes back, if he's able to come back. So no problem. Um, so we were talking about the the vines, and uh, so just just to let people know, what is like your typical harvest season uh, in Chile, where where you are? You know, when do you typically start, and when do you typically end? Well, normally, if you have whites, uh, you start in February, let's say tenth, first week of February, till May, middle of May with the mm -hmm. last Carmener. So normally you start with Carver uh, Sauvignon Blanc, then Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, stuff like that. And then the first red will be maybe Syrah or Merlot. And th then you have the rest, Cabernet Sauvignon, Frank, and then Carmener. The, the Carmener is the last one, last but week, normally okay. you start at the end, the last week of April and the two last, the two next ones in, in May. So it's around, it's around it's about February, March, April, May, four months. Nice. Okay. So just kind of, you know, you're over there. So similar to us, just over there, a little yes. reversed. <laughs> All right. So um, let's uh, let's talk purazines and Cab Franc. So as you know, we've been talking about how you're training the vines and taking care of it. Is the style of Cab Franc in Chile more like a Loire Valley where the purazines that bell pepper is, is there and kind of predominant? Or is it more like us here in California or I should say not everybody in California, but us in California where, you know, bell pepper is part of Cab Franc. So it's there, but it's not the most in your face uh, thing. So, yeah, yes. In, in our case, it's more like like that um, in terms of that we have since, I mean, December till May, it's normally it's, we have sun. So if you work the binds in terms to to open the canopy at the level of the bunches without taking the the, the leaf the, the ones in the border that they are they act like an umbrella to block the sun but you have light going inside you can wrap the tannins and you will avoid that uh, over exaggerated exaggerated flavor of pyrazines mm -hmm. uh, you always will have it because it's part of the cabernet franc but will be um, part of the personality of the Frank without being the dominant. Say, bad, right. dominant or bad or overwhelming, you know, like too much. No, it's, it has a touch. And then how you work the binds and the gills, everything will be more elegant or less, uh, or you will have more or less of that. But mm -hmm. let's say normally uh, it's less than uh, Loire. Yeah. Um, and um, kind of like California. That in that way, we are very similar. Okay. So now let's get to what 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 was in your glass. What are you drinking? Well, I'm I'm drinking now Milla Cala. Okay, this so is uh, one of our reds. We have three reds, three blends. Um, it's about Cabernet Sauvignon, sixty-seven percent, and twelve percent Frank. Uh, a touch of um, like. Uh, another 2% of Carmener, and then a touch of Syrah and, and Merlot. Um, our main wine, which is thick, it's about 85%, 80%, 79%, depends on the year, Cabernet Sauvignon, and then 20%, 21%, 15%, depends on the year, Cabernet Franc. Mm -hmm. Always present in this in our wines. Okay, but so in you... this case, Milla Gala. Okay, so you have, you said you have, that Vic only produces three wines. You have three, three wines. And three. is Mila, I'm sorry, Mila what? One more time. Mila, Mila, Mila Kala. It's, okay. it's coming. I mean, oh. we are. I, it Mila just Kala. clicked. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Madupudungun Madu language. So uh, it's about our native people, um, the Araucanos. Uh, the language was Mapodungun, and right. the place where we are, our denomin denomination of origin, uh, our valley where we are, exactly the area, is Miyawe. Miya means gold, where place. So it means the golden place. Okay. That's what. That's how the native people call it, 
a lot of years ago. I'm talking about a lot of years uh, before the Spanish arrived to to the to the to to Latin America, right? And so um, they used to call it like that because it was uh, rich in natural resources for them. Let's say there was a big lagoon, so there was fish, there was uh, mastodons, there was trees everywhere, so they have fruit. So for them at that time, no iPhone, no cars. And that was something really, you know, like uh, the golden, golden place. Golden, right, and, right. Uh, and, and then we took Milla from that, which is gold, and Cala is the translation of Vic to the Spanish. Oh, Vic, okay. as Vic, Vic as Vikings means, you know, that in Norway, they have a lot of the water that goes into the, the land very narrow like this. So they used to have at the end, uh, you know, uh, little uh, towns. Right. Uh, so when you watch Vikings, they have always at the end of this very narrow, straight, the straight. Of, straight water going in, they have something, you know. Right. Um, so that's big. It's about uh, something narrow goes into the, into the, in, into the land. And, and the translation of that to the Spanish is Cala. So it's okay. Milla Cala, the golden big. Awesome. It's, it's a play, a playing word. And the, the funny thing of this is that one of the daughters, her name is Camila. So if you if you turn this, you have Camila. La Camila. Um, yeah. uh, wow. <laughs> and we we, we didn't just... realize that till <laughs> till when somebody grabbed the bottle and said, but here it says La Camila. And we didn't realize it until we have the, 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 the label. But that's the, that's a part of the story. <laughs> she was she was she was Absolutely. Wow, I have well, a wine. I know? have a wine named after me. <laughs> <laughs> but so, it was something that happens, only happens. Is that so is that considered a different um, brand for Vic? Or does does he just have three labels and you know what I'm saying? Let, like yes, yes. Let, let's say let's say it's uh we have three ranges, but okay. we have two styles of wines. Uh Vic, it's kind of Bordeaux style. But Chilean, let's say elegant, leaner, uh, beautiful tannins, um, um, but with color, fruit in the nose, very um, Chilean, but very elegant. And Mia Kala's introduction to Vic uh, is the, I always said that Vic is that kind of book, that kind of uh, wine that makes you think, that change in every glass. So I said that, always said that Vic is a book. Every glass is a chapter, every sip is a page. And uh, when you know that often, and you know, normally you read that the books that he or she made, um, and you go to the library to buy the new one, even that you know him or her, before to buy the, bo the book, you turn it and you read the abstract, right? Mm -hmm. That's me, Yakala, an introduction okay. to the book. The introduction, okay. And now what's your, yes. third, what's your third wine? Well, we have another one, which is uh, La Puvelle, um, and uh, it's more New World style. Let's say uh, Napa, Chile, Argentina style, more about uh, round tannins, a little bit more volume in the middle mouth. Big is really linear, kind of Bordeaux style, but La Puvelle is more about um, a little bit more volume in the middle mouth without being heavy, but more space in the, in the, in the mouth, more about Carmener. Um, Okay. Syrah, so it has those kind of flavors and aromas. So we are very lucky that our terroir has different valleys and we, we can have different style of wines. Uh, so from one side, we have Bic, which is our main wine. Then we have La Puvelle in terms of prices. Uh, Bic is here, then La Puvelle, and then Milla Cala. Uh, okay. But Bic and Milla Cala goes one way, as one style, and then La Puvelle is another style. Okay. And within within your valleys, your your fruit, are you are is a certain valley kind of dedicated to one of the labels, or is the fruit kind of all right, we're going to take these barrels, these barrels, it's going to be Vic, and we're going to take these barrels, these barrels, and it's going to be, you know, how is no, it? No, no, we well, we um, what I learned from my friends in France is that you have to work your vineyard or your place for your wine. So. At the beginning, we were thinking to produce Vic as a very elegant wine, and we have the definition, but with grapes from all over the property. But in 2012, I realized that the Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc were something different from another type of Cabernet Sauvignon, 
that you can get from Maipo or other ballets. And, and then I realized that we have in some places with the property where the wind that comes from the ocean has a lot of influence and the temperature is lower, that aspect that we were looking for. And we are getting the Cabernet Sauvignon and the Cabernet Franc for big and, La and Mia Gala from those two ballets okay. where the wind comes into the property. Then the other four ballets, uh, we have three that they're dedicated to La Pivelle, which is the temperature is higher, like one degrees, two, two degrees sometimes Celsius. Um, but that makes it different in the wine. You know, one degree Celsius could be in the season, right. could make another type of grape. So that's another uh, style of wine. And we decide to go with this kind of uh, blend, more new world. And the bottle, the label, it's, it's all about, it's in, in the whole bottle. I don't have it here, but it's in the whole bottle and it's a piece of art. So that wine became the family wine in terms that all their passion are in that one, the wine, mm. the label, because it's art. And the idea became from the hotel. You know, the hotel has different rooms with art. In one room, there a piece of art that is one bottle of paint, but a Chilean artist. And so that, that wine is a different style. It's more about Carmener, more about Syrah, and more New World style. And Big's another story. But that's the chance that we have with our terroir. Mm. Beautiful. So where can people find, I, I don't have any to drink. So where can I find some of uh, your wines? How, how can people get a hold of them? Well, um, we are in different wine stores. Um, we are in different restaurants. Um, for example, like Fogo de Chao. Um, um, we are, I, I don't know I, I, exactly the name of some wine store. I, I don't remember right now, but and also you can find it in our web, in our website, and we, we will send it to you. So it's big, bigwine.com. Um, and you go in there and you will see the whole, all the, the, the wines and we will send it to your, to your home. Um, but you will find it in different wine stores and, um, and restaurants. Okay. So that, that's really what I was asking. They can go, they can go to vik.com, right? So Vic is vik.com. Big. Big wine, big okay. wine .com. Yes. Wine .com. And then that will tell them how to purchase it. Um, yes, yeah, so you can place your order, purchase it, and then we will send it to you right away. All right. We, have a, we have a warehouse in state for that. So we, we take our, around four days or something like that, five days oh. to get there. Not too there long. There are some states, yeah, there were st some states where we are still solving some some issues like illinois and texas but in the other in the other ones, uh we are we are we can be there very quick yes well <laughs> trust me uh, as american wine uh, lovers we totally understand the complications uh of living in certain states and getting wine delivered to those states it's, yes uh, yes it's it's rough it's rough um and then what about social media uh now i found I found you on your personal account. Uh, you reached out on your personal account, but does Vic have yes. their, you know, want to just tell people what your account is in case they have any questions, they want to reach out to you. And if Vic has a, has their own account. Well, um, we have uh, accounts for uh, the wines and for the hotels. So you can go to big wine, uh, you know, Instagram, big wine, uh at, it's ad no it's ad right ad no it's uh, yeah at, ad, it's, it's ad, 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 and then big wine ad, and that big wine or if you want to go and check the hotel it's at big chili okay. and you go to the hotel or you just can you know contact me it's christian that vallejo that winemaker and i i can ask any questions there it's so my my accounts it's about my passion which is wine and and in big, you know, I, I've been working with them already 12, uh, 14 years. This, mm -hmm. this year will be 14 years. And uh, wow. and it's my baby also, you know, I have been since the beginning here and we have been working with the family together. And I feel this like 
my my little baby. Every 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 barrel is one a new a new a new baby. You know. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, I just want to say, Christian, thank you so much for joining me and uh, sharing. You know your story and Cab Franc in Chile. You know it is. You know I am a Cab Franc maniac, and I love hearing stories of how it grows and how you know how it's treated in different countries and different regions. So thank you so much. Well, I can understand that because I'm also a fan of uh, Cabernet Franc. Thank you so much for this opportunity to talk with you. You already know that you have friends in Chile. So once Yay! we decide to come here, please visit us. We will be very happy to receive you here and we can uh, you know, share the wines together. You will see the story there and the big experience, which is uh, uh, something very okay. particular. Cheers to everybody. Thanks for the opportunity. And See you soon. Slancha, slancha. Thank you so 